Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine to keep you updated on real life situation in my country after brutal Russian invasion. If you support Ukraine and you want to witness our victory, please subscribe and share the videos that you find informative or important. And today I feel I need to explain a little bit of emotions that are surrounding summit in Vilnius and Ukraine-NATO relationships. And I would honestly like to start with the fact that I repeat in each of my vlogs, Ukraine and Ukrainian people are very grateful to all people of the world who support us in our fight. And every day we sacrifice human lives, every day we lose something important. We don't have future at the moment, we don't know what this future will be for us. We don't know if we will win this war. We believe we must because this is an existential fight. And believe me, the failure of Ukraine will definitely lead to failure of many other countries and world in general. Because I personally do not want to live in the world where people like Putin committing genocides and crimes against humanity, executing children, can continue being political power and can continue living. Um, I know that today there are lots of emotional speeches and messages and comments. I would like to start with the fact that in majority, 89% of Ukrainian people support our idea of joining NATO. It is also written in our constitution. Many of you inform me in comments, and I know that for a long period of time, because typically I do some research before I speak or record, I know that a country at war with not definite territories cannot become a member of NATO. I know that and we did not expect to become members of NATO on this summit. What we hoped for is a plan, a roadmap and a deadline. Let it be like five years or something. But we need some concrete things that uh, NATO wants from us, apart from winning the war. Because once again, we don't know when and uh, how will we win this war and what will happen to us tomorrow. So it is really good when, as an example with the European Union, you had like a folder with demands and you have to fulfill these demands and requirements and after that you will become a member and an invitation is more a symbolic gesture not meaning that you are accepting a country with war inside nato thus causing troubles so i have always believed that nato is strong and one of its missions is to guarantee safety and not just to its members, but to the world, because if the world collapses, NATO will collapse too. Then, uh, many people uh, start saying that Ukrainians are not graceful. I uh, don't wish you to be in the situations Ukrainians are, honestly. And perhaps if you had, you would like pay a lot not to experience things, even those people who live in semi-safe zones like mine, experience. I don't share with you many moments of my personal life uh, because I'm a different kind of person. I like to speak about Ukraine on my channel. But uh, having your mother receiving chemotherapy during blackouts is a very painful memory that will stay with me forever. And it was a very painful time for my mother, who passed away in January. And there are lots of personal stories, they are everywhere. So, from one point of view, I do ask you to treat us as normal people. But you have to understand that we live in abnormal environment. We live in the environment where we don't know what waits for us in future. We don't know if this night a missile will hit our flat. We see lots of people without limbs on the streets. We read about the destruction of our museums, our streets. We read about the explosions of dams and floods and thousands of animals dying. 
we live with the understanding that one third of our territory is practically erased and mined and uh, we live with the understanding that there are still people who doubt maybe we should sacrifice Ukraine and like push them to give up and negotiate with Russia because that's the way it has always been. We'll also live with the history. And uh, this history is also a history of many betrayals. Ukraine was occupied by communists after a short period of our independence in 1918-1922. Many people, millions, died. Russians committed artificial famine, Holodomor. We have a separate video on that. Holodomor, during which like from three to nine million people died in the breadbasket of Europe because they were taking away everything, every kind of food that Ukrainians were hiding to survive. People were dying on the streets. And by the way, many journalists from abroad visited Ukraine at that time and supported Stalin's propaganda saying that everything is fine. They were traveling on specifically developed tours to the best collective farms of Soviet Ukraine and they did not want to look to the left or to the right. They did not want to discover the truth. Uh, many did not want the collapse of the Soviet Union because they felt safer, just uh, the same way many are afraid of the collapse of Russia right now. They felt safer that like this monster is operating for decades. They know what it is, um, the control of nuclear weapons, all the same. But many nations like Ukrainian, like Baltic nations, they wanted freedom. They wanted to leave and they were not ready to sacrifice themselves. And the Soviet Union collapsed. And we gained our independence, but still all the attention and all the stakes were put on Russia because the world got used to the fact that Russia is a superpower and we have to consider it. No, Russia is not superpower. Russia is super bully, super terrorist, super alcoholic, super orc, but not superpower. At least I understand power in a different way. Then, together with Russia, the world, not just Russia, many countries to whom we are very grateful today, were active in demilitarization of Ukraine. And actually, we did one very good step. We decided to give up nuclear weapons. The first and the only country in the world that gave up its nuclear potential its nuclear weapons that were on its territory and belonged to the country after the collapse of Soviet Union. Because we are a peaceful country and I think to a very great extent we are very advanced and modern in our thoughts and we believed in the world where people don't need weapons and in particular nuclear weapons. We gave up that potential someone would uh, do everything to possess we gave it to Russia and signed Budapest Memorandum where many countries promised that for such a good gesture and an example of humanism they will forever support Ukraine and now supporting Ukraine for a year and a half in totally unjust and brutal Russian invasion they are tired but if we are talking about these responsibilities, I have a question. Why then did we sign that Budapest Memorandum? Did you want like to trick us or you do not uh, like you are not responsible for the words you are giving? Or isn't that the case when you have to support us? Uh, so perhaps many countries who might have considered, I don't know, giving up nuclear potential, will look at the example of Ukraine that needs to ask and that fights for itself. They will not believe future guarantees and they will not give up their nuclear weapons and perhaps they will be correct in that decisions because when it comes to real danger, um, 
you have to be grateful for everything your allies supply you with but you have to understand that it may be that you will be alone in some very critical moments people tend not to believe in ukraine after the collapse of soviet union they did not want to see ukraine as a separate country and still treated it as a russian province or zone of influence Budapest Memorandum was just a memorandum similar to, I don't know, declaration or other words, concerns and signals. I do not consider them serious words that have any serious meaning behind them. So Budapest Memorandum, then annexation of Crimea when everyone asked of global leaders not to escalate and to swallow this offense which was actually a very brutal mistake and no one is speaking about that because now crimea is used as a base for logistics and supply of russian troops and their further movement deep inside ukraine so this is a serious tactical mistake and come on many global leaders asked us not to react and we listened to them so perhaps when we ask for a signal uh, to putin that ukraine is treated as equal don't try to find like reasons why we are not good for something. Because I will not name the countries, but there are lots of countries in NATO who are not examples of super democracy or have fought all of their corruption problems. Once again, I'm not Russian and I'm not going to say that this or that nation is bad, but all nations have problems. And not all nations have strengths and resilience. So honestly, I do not think that uh, we are not grateful. We are very grateful. Uh, and in all of our problems, we have to blame Russia. All money expenditures, uh, all explosions, all inflations. This is all because of Russia, all immigrants, all unpredictabilities. It is all because of Russia. And even our emotions are because of Russia. And I would like to finish my today's video with a wish for you to never experience what my country experiences today. And when you see Ukrainians and you talk to Ukrainians or they are a little bit too emotional, think about what is happening in their home. This is not a sport competition. And I honestly believe that you either support a person in its fight or you don't. There is nothing like you observe and you think, if you're strong enough, I'm with you. If you're not strong enough, forget about it. So please, do not give up on Ukraine. Do not blame Ukraine for all of these things that we ask for. Because we would gladly not ask you any weapons, you know. We use these weapons on our territory. We kill Russian orcs and destroy our territory this way. All the fight is on the territory of Ukraine. Russia does not feel war. We feel it every day. Every morning we have funerals. And when I drink my morning coffee, I drink it to the bells of funerals. And I don't feel optimistic at that moment. And Russia is to blame for that. But... If we are talking about alliances and cooperations, we have to believe and we have to remember the promises like Budapest Memorandum, you know. So please forgive my emotions. Once again, I want to thank you all for being with me, for being friends of my channel and Ukraine. I know that in your daily conversations, in your letters to your senators and in your hearts, you keep faith in Ukraine and you cannot imagine how grateful we are for that and how grateful we were at the very beginning of this war. But I want us to be grateful after the victory too. I want us to win because today the war has not won. The Putin is still a president of Russia. Our civilians and soldiers are dying in hundreds. 
our infrastructure is destroyed so think about that when you uh, think that we are maybe over emotional thank you for buying me coffees becoming my patrons thank you for being my friends Slava Ukraini.